It's 742. As we honor our military men and women today, both current and former, we also want to address the challenges that these men and women face, often as a result of their duty. You know, more than two out of 10 veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, experience some kind of substance abuse, which can often lead to jail or even prison. Locally, though, there is a program that offers veterans who've been arrested a second chance. Judge Mose Floyd presides over Veterans Treatment Court, the Duval County Courthouse, and joins us this morning to explain more about this program. Judge, always a privilege to have you on the show. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So first, as a retired lieutenant colonel in the Marines and also a longtime prosecutor uh, before becoming a judge, would you explain the correlation specifically between mental health issues like PTSD and substance abuse or even alcohol abuse among our veterans? Well, oftentimes veterans, because of uh, experience they've had in service and in wartime, uh, suffer from uh, maladies such as you mentioned, uh, traumatic brain injury, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, mental health uh, issues, and drug and alcohol addictions. And they may not even know it, and they're not exercising the best of judgment. So the uh, treatment court gives them an opportunity to get the treatment they need and give them a second chance at life by cleaning up their records because they've earned it by the military service. Isn't that the truth? So how is the decision made to send then a veteran to your courtroom? Well, we try and seek them out when they come into the, uh, uh, the, the criminal system after arrest. We look at those with uh, qualifying charges and try and determine who, who the vets are. Some of them are not willing to own up to that because uh, they may not feel that good about themselves having been arrested, but they've earned the right. So we try and seek them out and uh, public defender's office knows about it, state attorney's office and the judges know about it. And they will uh, advise the uh, uh, vets of uh, the opportunity to go into veterans treatment court. And that process began by contacting either the uh, director of veterans treatment court, Terry Hamlin, or uh, the state attorney's representative, uh, Rudy Pollitch, or uh, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> or well, they can contact my office and sure. we'll get that process started. So what are qualifying criminal charges then? I mean, uh, we don't want to, to, get, to give people the assumption, for example, um, for them to assume that this, this is someone arrested for murder or, or rape. Yes, uh, the uh, qualifying charges are generally misdemeanors and second or third degree felonies. Uh, no first degree felonies and no forcible felonies are allowed. But just because they were arrested or charged does not mean that that's what the state's going to pursue. So even if the charge they don't think is qualifying, they can still apply and we will let them know if they're available. And it's not just that they're uh, arrested and they're veterans, but there must be some nexus to their military service. And they're interviewed by a, uh, a VA representative uh, to ensure that nexus uh, exists. And also we consider prior diagnosis. And, and we're, of course, referring to active duty or discharge veterans. Yes. What, what must they do, Judge, then to complete the program? It's a very intensive program. It's at least a year, at least a year long. They go through five phases. And initially, they're meeting with me once a week. They're attending counseling once a week. They're attending NAAA meetings uh, as required. Uh, there's also a community service project at the end as they uh, attempt to give back to the community. But it's very uh, intensive and uh, it's not easy. Uh, there have been some vets who wanted to get out of the program, but they have to apply to me to do that. But I know it's in their best interest, in the best interest of the families and their communities to finish the program. So I generally don't allow that. And in the end, they thank me for not having allowed them to get out. <laughs> yeah, something yes. tells me <laughs> in watching you in the courtroom for many, many years that you're, you're you, you know, you're, you're, you're stern and you're strict. Um, so it, it, is there a case maybe that you remember on uh, uh, that has you've seen through your courtroom a veteran that's passed through who um, it, this has really just turned his or her life around yes there was one individual who uh, started out uh, had some bumps initially but after uh, completing the program I didn't realize how bad he was and at uh, graduation we give them an opportunity to talk to the veterans they leave behind and he mentioned that uh, he had his family with him he reunited his family and he told the uh, veterans in the audience that they're looking, they were looking at a 15-year crackhead. And mm. as a result of the program, he was now, had, now as a prison ministry, got his license after about 10 years, and he is loving life. Wow, gives me yes. chills. Judge, thank you. Most Floyd joining us, presiding over the Veterans uh, Treatment Court here in Duval County. Appreciate your time this morning. Thank you for having me.